when the boot comes in. Hedgy Win tells you, Lose, this is a fantastic episode of When the Boat Comes In. Tom, at the beginning of the episode, wins at pitch and toss. Big time. Like winning the lottery back then, I would imagine. But unfortunately, two unsavoury characters don't like this. They don't like it at all. So later on in the episode, uh, one of the most memorable scenes from this episode has to be the tin panning. I mean, I thought that was fantastic, showing what local villains um, could be expected of back then. And this was basically... Um, women back then would all get their tin pans out, they would hit them with anything they had uh, to to make them feel embarrassed, really, of what they had done. And I thought that was a really good part of the episode. There's nobody to be frightened of. It's only women and bears. Out! Out! Matt Headley falls for the widower of an outside man in this episode. It's kind of really sad because, of course, back then, if you lost your husband, the father of your kids, you weren't really entitled to a lot. And Matt wants to be with her. And I expect he thought, well, I can offer you a wage as well. I mean, that's what it it was like back then, wasn't it? Very much so. Um, But unfortunately, as she says... um, She's not over her husband, and she's still married, even though she's a widower. That's the way she feels, and that's fair enough, obviously. But it's very sad for Matt. I remember when he's he gets really close to her burn, doesn't he, her, her kid? And he's playing with those tanks, do you remember? And he, he's saying about he feels like them. And it is very sad. I mean, it's great the way Matt eventually does find love because in this episode, it feels like he's never going to meet anyone, really. But what a nice man Matt Headley was, and eventually he does. But in this episode, no, it just doesn't work, does it? Aye. Come on and clap your hands. And for what? To see a woman like that? I have to get down her knees to scrub. A woman proud as a queen. I and Bonnie than many a queen. What? Sometimes I feel just like that tank. Blind, clumsy, hacking thing. Probably one of the funniest scenes of when the boat comes in is when Dolly locks out um, <laughs> Jack and Matt Headley. Yeah, because basically Jack has been seen with Jesse Seaton, and that's basically what it's all about, to be honest. She does mention about her not being taken out, and she'd like to be taken out for a change, which is fair enough, but it's funny, the woman that she's locked in with, she's like, I'd never do that. You know, they're working men, they need feeding. (laughs) Yeah, but it's very funny, they go back to the pub, of course, don't they? (laughs) And Jack's like, we've been locked out, and Billy's laughing his head off. (laughs) But they're men coming in from work, Dolly. Don't you feel a twinge? Not me, missus. I've started just as I intend to finish. They've been bad enough to me, the pair of them. Locked! Dolly! Dolly! I'd never do. Save your breath. I never shouted. I never said a word. The best thing about this episode for me is the ending. I mean, the tin pan in, yes, but the way Matt Headley and Jack Ford help out Tom Seaton, I loved that bit. I mean, the, the whole bit where the villains, they're saying uh, to Tom, take your boots off, there's a good lad, and like really baiting him, and then... Jack Ford does exactly the same to them and they don't like it. I thought that was brilliant. And yeah, Tom was really thinking of leaving at this point, wasn't he? Um, Because he had this money and obviously 
the local villains were after him. So, again, Jack. He's the man, isn't he? He helps the Seton family out. He really does. Oh! Oh, stop! Right! Now let's have your jackets. What for? Because I say so. Your belts. Away, get on with it. Now your boots. Come on, let's have them. On to the last episode of When the Boat Comes In from Series 1. A kind-hearted rat with a life belt. Yeah, very aptly named. And my favourite part of the episode, or one of my favourite parts, is when Jesse Seaton... Uh, sees Jack Ford in the courtroom and she's like, you wonderful, cunning bastard. Yeah, because that's basically Jack Ford in uh, a few words, isn't it, to be honest? I mean, it's all about this lady who can't pay her rent. Jack stands up for her. It seems like a very noble thing to do. It is. But of course, he's thinking of the end game. He wants to be the boss at the fitters union of course dolly doesn't understand this because jack does go to prison but when he comes out of prison everybody's there aren't they they all celebrate him and he's there with his hammer isn't he which is fantastic it's a fantastic episode i'd say it was one of the best episodes if i'm honest i mean it has everything in it and jack yeah that's what he is he's a wonderful cunning bastard <laughs> That woman had an out. If it had been left to you, she'd be in the workhouse now and her bands would be in the orphanage. Well, that's not my idea of justice never was and never will be. I did what I could, and I'd think myself less of a man if I hadn't. If this uproar continues, I shall clear the court. All right, lads, all right. Give me his chance, give me his chance. I shall hear anything more you have to say. Anything relevant, that is. No more political speeches. I reckon you've had enough for one day. With folks like you, it takes a long time to sink in. I've finished. Till the next time. <clears throat> you will go to prison for one month. wonderful coming bastard and it's so brilliant what he does at the meeting at the branch meeting for the fitters union he completely outstages the chairman he says something that the chairman was going to be saying in the next meeting he says that it's urgent we can't wait basically because of the poor plight of this woman and another thing that gets me is when Jack is helping out um, some other people. Dolly is like, um, does it give you a good feeling? And Jack's like, more than that. So he's, al he's always got an end game, Jack Ford. Something I really admire about him. He, he did make a difference, yes. But he was very clever. He was very cunning. And um, it's just the differences of the characters, isn't it? Like where, with Matt Headley, he was very much heart on his sleeve. He meant what he said. With Jack... Maybe he didn't, but he got results, didn't he? Another episode I'm thinking of is when he paid for um, people to put their hands up. Um, one of his speeches that he makes. Yeah, very clever. Very clever, Jack Ford. Left a widow and two bands. And they're all not far short of starvation. It's either crawling on her knees to the guardians or the workhouse for her and the orphanage for her bands. Now, brothers... I know we're facing short time, but surely to God we can manage something. Hello, Jack. No, thanks, Herbie. I'm just off. The wife's not been too well, and uh, I don't like to leave her on her own too much. Well, I've got a good man there. A right, right. chap with a bit of heart. Yeah. Time somebody thought of the wife and bed. What with you? Of course, Tom Seaton is finally 
grassed up, it must be said, by the same lady who Jack Ford helps out. <laughs> yes, it's hilarious, isn't it? I mean, well, not for Tom. But yeah, he ends up going to prison. And it's quite funny when he's in the court. He doesn't have anything to say. And that was shocking, in fact. The judge is like that, isn't he? You will be sentenced to three months. Thou shalt not steal, that's a commandment. And I've seen it broken. Aye, me and all. Not that far away, neither. The wicked shall flourish, the book says. That one flourished all right. Good suits, money to burn. Until the police got it. Shot him, did you? Better to do your punishment in this world, Mr. Ford, than in the hereafter. But you don't have to worry. You'll be among the elect. I've got them! How many? Six. And there's two barracks coming. Where are they? In the back lane. Right. Now you go down with Matt. Two up here, two on the stairs. You and the other two load the barracks, right? Where do we take the stuff? Has Les come? No, he says we're committing an illegal act. Oh, he does, does he? Well, take it to the branch office. And mind you don't get caught, Jack. I'll manage. Go on. On you go. Well, well, Brother Poskett. I'm not one to bear a grudge, Brother Ford. I believe in direct action. I'm glad to see you doing all. Barris, come! Aye! Right, let's get on with it. Right, in you go, lads. Jack, somebody split. The landlord's on the way with Polis. You need a rear guard then. Come on, Jack. Don't talk that. Matt, you'll never get away with two batters if I don't stop. You could do time for this man. I might have could. A martyr in the workers' cause. You better give that to Mrs. Downey. She'll never leave without it. So I'm just looking through the episodes of When the Boat Comes In on the DVD here, thinking some of my favourite episodes from Series 1. Mm. There's so many, isn't there? I would say the last episode, definitely. I would also say um, I really enjoy Empire Day on the Slag Heap and um, Paddy Boyle's Discharge. There's so many. King for a Day. There's just so many, isn't there? Have you got the DVD box set? If you haven't got it, I definitely recommend it. Yeah. On to Series 2 next. I hope you've been enjoying the When the Boat Comes In podcast. I did this out of a love for the show. I also talked to Susan Jameson, who played the part of Jesse Seaton, so you can see that on my page as well. Next time, of course, it will be all about Series 2, talking about each episode of When the Boat Comes In in order. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Well, Matt. Chuck? All the better for seeing you. How are you? I've ordered breakfast. Oh, canny breakfast that. Looks like you've enjoyed it. Enjoyed it? That was medicinal. <laughs> How's Dolly? I've kept an eye on Good lad. Looks like there's going to be a procession. I always said you were the best corporal I ever had.
daddy sing to the mummy dance to the daddy to the mummy sing Thou shalt have the fishy on a little dishy Thou shalt have the fishy when the boat comes in Thou shalt have the fishy on a little dishy Thou shalt have a haddock when the boat comes in Thou shalt have the fishy on a little dishy Thou shalt have the bloater when the boat comes in Thou shalt have the fishy on a little dishy Thou shalt have the mackerel when the boat comes in Thou shalt have the fishy on a little dishy Thou shalt have the salmon when the boat comes in <laughs>